Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to first address the idea of attention, something I've been thinking about a lot lately, writing about a lot lately. And um, it's, I think, really at the core of everything we're doing. One of the questions that came up in pregame chat here was that uh, what if I can't get to that gap between thoughts without like really getting into a Taiji form or something like that, or standing meditation or something like that. And uh, it kind of fits in with this idea. The, I believe that your attention, your ability to attend or direct your attention is your most valuable resource. It is, and that's true for all, all humans. I think our ability to, to attend, to direct our attention, it's the, the core of all experience is our attention. And your ability to control your attention is your most important superpower. And that is, if you can learn to direct your attention, then it opens up infinite possibilities. If you cannot control your attention, you're pretty much at the, at the whim of whatever is happening, and including the part of your mind that is... Um, chaos. So your ability to, to when I talk about attention, there's two qualities of attention that I want to want to emphasize. One is the capacity to get the nervous system in a in, in a place where it is ready to receive information. So just being able to extend your awareness so that you're able to receive information coming, probably coming in whatever it may be. So that's like you know, kind of the yin side of attention. That is in a, in a state of preparedness. The channels are open, ready to receive. Then the second part is where you are discriminating either consciously or unconsciously, consciously or pre-consciously, able to discriminate and say, this is important right now. And this is happening in your nervous system all the time. Things are, you know, your subconscious, pre-conscious body mind is constantly making choices. Each heartbeat, there's a, there is a choice in your autonomic nervous system whether to speed up or slow down. It's, uh, if it's speeding up, it's activating the sympathetic nervous system. It's slowing down then you are activating the, the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So that decision is happening all the time. And with it, all kinds of other things are, are cued into that. When the sympathetic nervous system is, is, is cranking, then you're gonna get more of your fight, flight, freeze hormones and neurotransmitters happening. When the parasympathetic is happening, it's more into the rest and digest mode. So there's that, that constant conversation is happening at a pre-conscious level. But that also you have a voluntary attention. That is where you choose to think about this and not that. You choose to, to direct your attention at one thing and another. And this is the other really essential part of, of attention. That is your ability to filter out vast quantities of information to be able to deal with the very small amount that your conscious mind can process at any, at any given moment. So our ability to regulate our attention, our mind, is, uh, is our most important superpower. So with that, we're able to, to decide to be here doing this and not doing something else. 
stop watching reruns of Laverne and Shirley. The, there's a decision there to where to direct one's attention. The decision right now to listen to what I'm saying as opposed to checking your, your text messages. You are choosing where to put your attention. Now, if you don't direct your attention, you do not control your attention, somebody else will. We are bombarded with lots and lots of, of stimuli, which are cunningly des designed to grab as much of our attention as we can. And not only that get us into an emotional state where that is, we are becoming, we care about these, these things, be it who wins the football game or, you know, who is uh, the next American Idol or whatever it is that, that is put out there to grab your attention and to sell more deodorants and beer and things like that. So the capacity to control your attention means that you have to be able to occupy a position where you can step outside of your mind and be able to control your mind. This is something we talked about um, last week. We were talking about disappearing the chi, right? When I talked at the end of uh, Qigong exercise, I have you disappear the chi. And I, I said that in order to disappear the chi and with that dissolve everything, you have to assume a perspective that is even more insubstantial than the energy in order to be able to do that. In order to control the mind, you have to assume a perspective, a place from which to view that is more insubstantial than the mind. So in the classical Chinese model that you know you first control the mind, then you control the heart mind, which is the, the shin, uh, spelled X-I-N, opinion, H-S-I-N in, uh, in uh, the way Giles, but the, uh, so your heart, and that's, that's more your emotional mind. It's also kind of fits in with a lot of what I'm talking about, the pre-conscious. And it's a, it's, it's described, and we talked about this a couple of months ago, you know, they described it as the the shin monkey. So the and that's it's excitable, it's erratic, it's impetuous, impulsive, it's scrambling around. Learning to control that is the job of the E, which is the wisdom mind, and variously described as you know the logical rational mind or something beyond that. And I prefer to think of it as something beyond that, but you know, it, there's a, a variety of, of uh, explanations for that. But that's a yin horse. And the yin horse job is to control the, the shin monkey. So, but each of those, you know, you're occupying a position of greater insubstantiality in order to do that. In order to control the E, you have to move even, even more insubstantial into your shen, your spirit. Now we're going into, we're moving very far in the direction of nothing as opposed to something. It becomes more and more of a, you know, less and less substantial to like, you know, like it becomes more just an idea that a, than uh, something you can think of. But the um, um, learning to control your mind which each and every one of you is doing requires that you be able to get outside of your mind, be able to say this, to make a choice in what you choose to put your attention on. So the question about how do I get into that gap between thoughts is very much about where you choose to locate your awareness. How insubstantial are you willing to go in order to 
be able to occupy that position. So if you are in your mind and it's the that idea of the gap between thoughts or something is is you know something uh, that I do. It's a resource. It's a it's it's a, an object of thought. You, it's you're, you're just moving thoughts around. You're rearranging the furniture. In order to be able to to do that, you have to actually leave the building. You have to get out of the building of the mind and move into a that gap between thoughts. To be able to get there, you have to be able to move into a state where you are looking at your mind kind of like you'd look at your your laptop. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I can I'll boot it up and we'll do a few things here and okay, that's done, I'll close it and, and be able to sit here. How do we do that? It is the, it's a matter of familiarity, which is part of the Kung Fu, which is to get so familiar with going to that insubstantial place that you, you say, oh yeah, I got this. And you're able to comfortably go there and, and park there and just watch the, the, the shin monkey do its tricks and say, okay, all right, you settle down over there. You know, watch the, the logical E do its tricks and say, okay, you sit down over there and then you're boom. You're in that quiet place. How do we get there? We practice. We, every time we activate body, mind, spirit integration through the superconscious by actually feeling into your body, consciously feeling, consciously moving. Every time we do that, we open the door to that superconscious state. The more familiar we get with it, the easier it is to go there. Easier it is to, when you go there, you're able to direct attention from that, from that neutral spot. If you are banging around from one thought to another, there is, you got no place to stand. You have to actually step outside to be able to control these, these energies of thought that are banging around inside your inside your mind. So when, every time we go to that place where we actually are feeling, we get a, an opportunity to to move into that 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 state of spirit, Chen, and that's where the action happens. That's the word we're developing our, our our skills in accord with this. And the, the real interesting thing about this way of going about it as opposed to just observing your thoughts, is this is uh, this is a form of meditation. So what it does is by integrating the body mind into the process, you you don't let go of your physical abilities whenever you get, you move into that insubstantial state. You're able to include the substantial and the insubstantial at the same time. So, the, uh, so it becomes a transcend and include kind of a thing. Each, each, each level of, of expansion allows you to bring along with it the, and, and not just bring along with it, but enhance the more substantial aspects of your being. So what that means in terms of your, of your, you know, the payout for you is the cash value is where increased health and vitality comes with that things operate more smoothly, as well as your capacity to function in the direction of, of say, as a martial artist with less internal conflict, less 
internal resistance for, for, for what it is you're doing. So in the past, I always said, yeah, point your index finger, feel your finger, reach and, and, and feel that, and that will allow you to clear the mind. And it will, if you can do it again, as if you had never done it before. That means putting your full attention on feeling that finger. It's, the longer you do it, the harder it is to do because it's easier just to plug into the memory of having done that once and say, yeah, it didn't work. You know, well, you actually haven't done it. You're, you're doing the, you're replaying an old movie, but it's not just the fingers. You know, you can reach with your elbows and just do that right now. Just, just reach out with the elbows and feel that. And take a breath and notice that everything smooths out. And that's because we're able to direct attention. When we say, oh, reach with the elbows, we are controlling attention. Elbows are being emphasized. They get the solo. And the rest of the band just kind of vamps along and, and, and lets the elbows do its thing. But the whole band is better for the fact that the elbows are taking their solo now. And then they recede in the background, but they're they're established there. They're like they're, they're still doing their thing, and everybody else starts to play. Mm 